Welcome back to another episode, guys. Today we're in New Orleans. We're checking out Kelsey's 210 gallon tank, but first, we we'll stopped by to check our friend Chad and his store right here. You guys can see it, Reef Consortium. It's been open for over a year. He's got a lot of goodies. I'm gonna show you what he's got going on. If you're in the area, come and check him out. Let's go see him, come on. Kelsey, what's up, buddy? Hey, how's it going? Thank you for having us over, Yeah, man. for sure, definitely uh, excited to have you here. Beautiful tank, I walked in, it's, uh, you told me it's a 210 gallon tank? That's right, yep. 210, right. 72 inches by 24 inches deep, 29 inches tall. Okay, well, I'm gonna hit you with a bunch of questions. How long has this thing been running? So, this tank has been running for about four years now. Four years? But the aquascape that, every, that you're seeing here has actually only been about two years old. Two years. Yeah. That's and right. how long you been reefing for? I've <clears throat> uh, been reefing for about six, six and a half years. Six and a half? Yeah. So you got the bug and it beat you hard, right? Oh I yeah, tell. definitely. So I, I started with a hundred gallon. It was a, uh, the plan was just fish only. And then I saw a coral. It was a frog spawn. Actually this frog spawn was the first coral that I had <clears throat> the, the same, you know, uh, piece of it uh, was the first coral that I got, but once I saw that coral in there, I wanted to dabble into it, and then that was it. The coral bug bit, and... And that was it, the rest is history. Then you get coral addiction, yeah. I'm just randomly gonna ask you some questions. The most beautiful part of blue tank I have ever seen. You think so? Yeah. Oh, yeah. M, she's, G. She's nice, so we've been having her, I call her her, but uh, she's about five years old. Oh. Or we've had her for five years, and uh, she is definitely the boss of the tank. Cool, since we're talking about fish, what are the fish? I see you got a Tomini tang. Yep, that's right. So Tomini tang's probably the, 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 the workhorse of the tank, right? Yeah. It's just picking, constantly. constantly, picking. constantly. Uh, but most of, these, most of these fish that I have in here are actually, she may be the only fish that I've bought from a store. Oh yeah? All the other fish uh, end up just getting from other people. They're shutting down tanks or um, this tank, this one was getting bullied. So you're like the fish it. rescue guy. Yeah, it's like a fish rescue, uh, you know, some corals too, but... Um, Isn't that people kind of rescue whatever. show here in Luciana or something like that? <laughs> the, there you go, you'll be the fish rescue guy from Luciana. Yeah, okay. there you so, go. <laughs> so a lot, of, a lot, I mean, the sailfin, nice. I've had her a couple years, but that was the, the clowns, which are in the Ghanis right now. I just got those about a year ago. They were in. Man, look uh, at those clowns, man. Yeah, those beautiful. are huge. Yeah. So that was rescue as well? Yeah, some rescues. Man, I gotta start a little <laughs> program myself, man. <clears throat> if you guys got any rescue fish, I'll take care of them, guys. Just kidding. <laughs> but I have that file fish. I haven't seen that type of file. He's a, a orange tail file fish. He's gonna come out in a little while. He was a rescue and he doesn't look like any other file fish. That oh, I've right here. Seen for, yeah. The file fish. That's thing. right. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of people think he's a trigger, but he's not a trigger. And it's he's, no picking on uh, your coral? He doesn't do any pick. Now he'll go on the underside of some of the corals. Yeah. So I don't know if he's nipping at anything, but he's not a coral nipper. Interesting. No. I, I do have two wrasses, so I have the melanaris. Keep and then the I parasites have, away, right? Yeah, that's right. And uh, but it was also just a really pretty fish. And then um, I, I did get the six line wrasse, kind of more for uh, for parasites. So I. I have unfortunately had uh, a little bit of issues with uh, Montipora eating nudibranchs. Okay. And that was a, one of the main reasons I did want to end up putting him in the in the tank. If you look at some of the Montes, they're not in the best of shape. You could tell they've done it. But since I put the six line, you could tell that- yeah, he's keeping it fun than his food. You could tell that they they are uh, lower in population. They're excellent fish for your reef. They're great hunters, yeah. All, yeah. always. That's right. I don't know if you've seen a video, you did Manny's 200 gun 180 tank recently, one of my latest yeah, videos. Yeah, I think so, yeah. And he built the wall all the way up. Very similar to what you did, but you yeah. don't see as much <clears throat> space, how you kind of have you left it open. Right. But it's very <clears throat> cool to see something like that. It's refreshing to see a tank from from top to bottom, you see the whole thing covered, you know? Right. You don't see a lot of tanks like that. Yeah. Because it's hard to get corals that they can do well at the top without shading everything at the bottom. Right, that's right. I wanted that lifted aquascape look. So you got four pillars, you know? You got one, two, three, four, and then it just arches, it just arches across. So one of the things that I have to discuss with people all the time mm -hmm. is, they always want me to go higher with the rug, and I explain oh, to yeah. them, yes, you want to go higher in certain points, but 
that's not what you're gonna see because if you see <laughs> right here, look how much height the corals are adding that's right. to this rock structure. Right. So I try to explain it to them and sometimes they want me to go within six inches of the water <laughs> and I'm like, what coral are you gonna put there? They don't, right. they don't get that concept. So that's right. hopefully if you guys are watching, if you're thinking of Aquas Cave, you can see what I'm talking about here. You see the stack horns right there. Yeah, that's right. The highest rock is a little bit over, it's maybe Almost 55, 60. Uh, 60 percent yeah up, of the rock and the rest of it is just the static horn you know going going up to the top and when I planted it I mean it was it was not but about you know four or five inches tall and then it just grew all the way up yeah so if you if you have the aquascape all the way to the top they have zero chance to grow. zoanthus you can grow maybe or something <laughs> yeah that's lines. right if you if you were not going sticks then you didn't have to worry about the the height of it well that. believe it or not this Montipora setosa 17, 20 years ago, it was like the hot stuff. It was like, really? oh yeah. man, people were charging an arm and a leg and you couldn't get a hold of it. It's like that, everybody was after that it. That gr grows pretty quick. And if you look pretty close, uh, it's I, got a little bought a, spot. I bought a grafted piece and I just planted it straight in the middle of the previous grow out of the colony. And then the grafted part just melted into it just like it's a part of the colony. Yeah, a lot of the corals I have is even though I'm a newer school reefer, yeah. some of these corals are the older school. You know, I, I just buy something if it grows well. I see it in other people's tanks. And then I, I love your uh, your torch island, your euphilia yeah. island. So when I when I put this tank together, even though it's mostly SPS, a lot of sticks and stuff like that, this is probably where my heart is the most. Is it? Yeah, I think so. So like, I always think, do I want to go heavy SPS and you know, give the tank a, a, you know, where the SPS could be top notch and stuff like that. But it's like, I can't, I, I can't see myself parting with the, with the, the babies, the torches and the euphilia. This is another coral that I found in back in the Vivid Aquarium in the year 2009. And I walked in, we were in town, me, Jason Fox, Gadgets, Lou, my business partner, and a couple other guys. We were there hanging out and we walked in and they had three mushrooms uh -huh. and I have never seen a yellow slash orange mushroom in my life. Yeah. And I remember freaking out and I remember they told me not for sale and I made them an offer back then <laughs> of $300 and they freaked out immediately. They say yes. They just did it, yeah. So yeah, mm -hmm. that was, I remember when I first bought that mushroom, we, we call it jawbreaker because my jaw just hit the floor. Right. I remember like, what is it? I thought it was fake. <laughs> right. I mean, genuinely they didn't believe it was real because you got to understand that how they didn't have as many corals back then. Right. And then the LEDs lights weren't predominant. And here you're used to seeing red mushrooms and maybe a, a green mushroom or a blue right, mushroom right. and it just wasn't yeah, the same. And all those. of a sudden you see something that bright, it was just crazy. The texture right. looked different. That's right. And then not just that, but one thing worth mentioning is this little uh, feather dusters. <laughs> I love them. Yeah, they're everywhere. Yeah, so, uh, you know, some people might look at them as pests or whatever, but to me, it's like a filter feeder, right? It's, I love it's them. pulling out everything. It adds just a, a little bit of, a, a, you know, extra flowiness inside of that. And, and I really like them too. So let me ask you a little bit about your equipment. So yeah, what do you for have sure. for flow? So all gyrus for okay. the flow. So it's three max spec gyrus. So you have the two that's, of course, you know, coming in and creating the, the random flow in the middle. And then I have one in the back left that's uh, sort of blowing out to the front. But that's that's all the flow that I have in here. Yeah, it's it's plenty. It's, it's the way you build the aquascape is nice and open. Yeah, that's right. And even like if I clean both gyres, 100% um, of both of them, of all of them, it's it's too much. I even have to dial it down. Is it? Uh, and it's not so much for the, the acros, of course, could take the flow. It's, it'll, it'll cause a, some turbulence right here, and I've ripped the tissue of a couple of and torches. They will close almost, if it's right? too much, and they'll tend to stay a little bit more closed. Okay, and can we see what you're doing for lights? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. The tank is predominantly lit by bar lights. Uh, I actually get these custom made, and I, I sort of started my own like little product brand with okay. these. Okay. So what lights. are they called? So I call them uh, reflit bars. It's a custom spectrum, uh, custom degrees of the lenses. So I, I picked all the, the light colors, the spectrums. So it's two different bars. One is blue violet, and then the other is uh, blue white. And just researching lights and colors and how everything works is kind of like the perfect spectrum. So there's no, it's very simple too, right? T5s are getting phased out sort of. So my thought was, okay, well, can I make some bars that are like the perfect spectrum, perfect combination that just still gives a good blanket of light. And then I have Viper Spectras that I was running on the tank previously. 
And uh, so I, I just ended up putting these back on, uh, just on the side, being that the bars were only 48 inches. All right, can we look at your filtration yeah, down below? Sure. I'm gonna have to, they're magnet to, you know, stop the kids from getting in here. Yeah, so um, <clears throat> filtration, uh, keep it pretty simple. So go through filter socks, got a skimmer, and then Very I small have, skimmer, I noticed. Yeah. Why uh, so small? The way that I look at it is if you did a bare skimmer, it would be kind of over skim. I've always yes. heard and seen like, you know, if you go too much too big, you're skimming too much, right? If you have the really good skimmer, you maybe stripping out a little bit too much. So I went with something a little bit uh, on the smaller side. I believe that. On all my videos, I'm always telling everyone that protein skimmers got too advanced or too strong. Yeah, it's too much. And you right? can strip too much out of the tank. Yeah. That's why I just wanted to hear your side of things. I agree. I went from that to a refugium and uh, a, a bucket refugium. So Is that a DIY? Yeah. So it's just, I mean, if you look good, it's, it's just a Lowe's bucket. So in there, it's some, uh, some Kato. Just Kato in there. I used to have it where I had a light sitting on the top and I just had Kato and it's more of like a real refugium, right? You keep it more concentrated it's just that dirt, way. It would get dirty and I didn't like the dirtiness. So uh, I ended up s seeing a YouTube video with someone that did a bucket method. Yeah. And I was like, ah, the cleanliness. Like you could just keep everything to one little concentrated area. When I prune the Kato, yeah. it's just so much easier to deal with it. So you even see my skimmer has a little bit of uh, Coraline growing on it. I and see that's it. from when, when I had the light open to the entire sump, it was going onto the skimmer and it was causing that. So I just wanted to ball it down to something that was simple, easy, and then, you know, uh, keep everything into one little area. So it's really easy to clean. It's easy to take the bucket out, just go clean it, prune the Kato. Cool. And then swap it out. Yeah. So let me ask you something here. This is called Gwasser, I'm assuming? Yeah, that's right. Are yeah. you using it for auto top off or are you using you know, dosing it 24 7? So, uh, well, not 24 7, but it is. A, I have a doser that pulls out a lot during the night. During so, the night. Um, yeah, it'll run multiple times, pulling about 100, uh, 100 to 150 milliliters every hour throughout the night. And then, uh, then it is also. Um, auto top off. Yep. And besides cog washer, are you dosing anything else for calcium and alkalinity? Yeah, that's right. So I have, uh, I do BRS's two part, well okay. three part, I guess, but I, I do, my method of dosing is um, the BRS Tropic Marin uh, balling hybrid method. Gotcha. So yeah, alkalinity, calcium, magnesium, and then the uh, chloride, uh, sodium chloride free salt. And then you are using a Neptune controller, I see? Yep, that's right. Yeah. Uh, when my wife and I first set up our tank, we were going on vacations and we were like, you know, I, I could use something to sort of monitor the tank while I was going. So we ended up getting the, the Apex. And how long have you had the so, Trident running with? So I have the, I've only gotten the Trident, it's only about a bit, been about a year that I have the Trident. And uh, I like it, it gives me a, a good baseline of all my numbers. I still test on a basically a weekly basis and you can actually hear it right now. It's yeah, running, I heard it. running at 12 o'clock. But um, so yeah, Apex been since uh, almost since I started reefing and then the, the Trident's been about a year, year and a half. So final question is I wanted to ask you about some of your feeding uh, yeah. schedule and uh, some of your maintenance schedule. Yeah, for sure. So let's start with the feeding. Yeah, so mm -hmm. feeding, I, I make a frozen DIY kind of fish food, okay. so chop up shrimp and squid and uh, you know uh, just all kinds of different meaty food um, i put some powdered food in there as well um, and a little bit of aminos in the food and so i just make my own frozen diy food and then i uh, i feed the fish twice a day with that and then for uh, i guess you could say supplemental I add nori, I add a half a sheet of nori about every two to three days. Okay. And what salt are you using? When you so do I, I kind of switch around. Okay. Um, so my target levels uh, is like eight for alkalinity, 420-ish for calcium, uh, 1400 for magnesium. So basically what I do is I try to find a salt that matches these numbers that I want to do. Fritz Bubach, HW Marine Mix, and then the, the Aqua Forest Reef Crystals. Uh, so I, I go back and forth. Just depending depending on price, but to me, I mean, this is just me, like kind of like salt, salt, 
as long as the parameters are around yeah, what you want to, you know, what you want to do and, and maintain, that's what I shoot for. But aquaphorous reef salt is is the salt I've been using. And when you change water, how many gallons do you change? So I change about I change about a sump's worth. So this is about 15 gallons that I'll pull out of here, <clears throat> and then I, I do that every two to three weeks. All right. So this is it for this tank. So we're not just done, guys. You have two more tanks. I do. Yeah. What are these tanks? Can you tell me? Yeah, so one is an anemone tank, and then the other one is a lagoon. That, and how big are these tanks? Yeah, so the anemone tank is a 93 gallon cube, and then the, uh, the lagoon is about 315 gallons. Let's go check them out. Let's go. Next episode.